So, I want to uh, start off where we left off last week uh, with Joseph. And uh, he's in Potiphar's house. And uh, I want to read Psalms 37, 23 through 26. Because as we know, Joseph was prospering in the house of Potiphar. And Potiphar put him over everything. I mean, all of his business, all of his uh, administrative uh, works and everything. Here in Psalms 37, 23 through 30, 26, 23 through 26, this is the Living Bible. It says, the steps of good men are directed by the Lord. He delights in each step they take. If they fall, it isn't fatal, for the Lord holds them with his hand. And David said, he said, I have been young and now I am old. And in all my years, I have never seen the Lord forsake a man who loves him nor have I seen the children of the godly go hungry. Instead, the godly are able to be generous with their gifts and loans to others, and their children are a blessing. Joseph, by the way, the Bible says, was a very handsome young man. So that's where we're going to start tonight. The Amplified Version says, Now Joseph was an, an attractive person and fine-looking. All right? This is what the Amplified says. Joseph was a good-looking man. He was attractive and he was and 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 uh, he was he was fine. He was good. And so you have to understand that uh, Joseph is in a situation where God is blessing him and anointing him. Even in a bad situation uh, God is blessing him and anointing him and favors on his life. The question is what's going to happen now? And you know I asked you last week I said is he going to get better? Or is the bottom going to fall out? Is he going to continue to go to the next level of blessings and favor? Or will he go down? And I want you to understand something that sometimes when the favor of God is on your life and there's blessings going on in your life and things are just going well and then you hit a bump and you hit a slide and you go down and God begins to, to be in the fire with you. He begins to be in trouble with you and cause you to have peace and and a lot of times we feel like, all right, God, they, I thank you so much, Lord, because, you know, I'm coming out of this. I got peace and, and direction and all of this stuff is happening in my life after this bad, terrible thing has happened or after this test and trial has come in my life. And, and now I'm on my way back up. But I want to submit to you tonight that sometimes things get worse before they get better. And we're going to see that with Joseph. Although he was blessed and he was favored by God, we're getting ready to see in a situation where it got worse. I want to let you know that even when things get worse, when it seems like you're climbing back up and, and the bottom falls out again, don't give up. Keep your faith. Keep the faith. Keep your hope, man. You got to always continue to believe in what God's word says. So let's so as we look here, the Bible says, one day, this is verse 7, says one day at about this time, Potiphar's wife been making eyes at Joseph, so she's been watching him all the time, and suggested that he come and sleep with her. All right? Now here comes a, here, here, here comes a dream stiller. Now you have to understand that Joseph had dreams and he had uh, purposes and plans that he knew God put in his spirit. That's what got him in trouble when he told his brothers. And so now we have to recognize, and he has recognized, that Potiphar's wife is a dream stiller. She's there to cause him to abort what God uh, was going to th do through him and how God was going to use him. She, she was there to, to stop that. And the enemy was using her. Now, you have to remember now that Potiphar's wife was in a position, and she's probably in a position where if she said anything to particular slaves, that she never got no for an answer. But this time it was different. So the Bible says in verse 8, Joseph refused. He looked and he told her, he says, My master trusts me with everything in the entire household. So Joseph is, is reminding her that your husband has trusted me with everything. And you have to understand something, that when God's favors on our life and he promotes us and he causes us to grow and 
and, and, and experience victory after victory. After victory. That means his favor is not, not only on our lives, but he has entrusted us. In, in, in other words, God can, God can trust us to do his will. He can trust us to do what he asks us to do. And so this master, Potiphar, had tr entrusted Joseph with everything in his entire household. I want to read your scripture in Matthew 25, verse 21b. Uh, in the Amplified. Matthew 25, 21b. It says, His master said to him, Well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over little. I will put you in charge of much. So we see here that Joseph refused to do what Potiphar's wife told him because he understood that he was on his way to something bigger and he had to be trustworthy and faithful even in the small things. All right? So he says, he, he tells Potiphar's wife, he said, he himself has no more authority here than I have. He has held back nothing from me except you, yourself, because you are his wife. So she's asking Joseph to sleep with her. And Joseph is saying, your husband has put me over everything. And he's understanding in his mind that this is not it. This is just the beginning. Because the Bible says, if you're faithful over small things and little things, he'll make you faithful over much. He'll give you more things. And so Joseph, is, he has tunnel vision. And that's what we have to understand, that don't, don't let things sidetrack you. Don't let uh, circumstances and situations get you off course and get you to looking at to the right or to the left. Don't trade your future blessings for a little of, of right now pleasure. And that's the problem with the world now in this situation that we're in. Everybody, they want, they don't, they don't, they're not looking at the big picture. They're not trying to live. They're not looking down the road at, at weeks and months and years. They're looking at what they're missing right now. And see, a lot of times what you're missing right now uh, is not good for you anyway. It's, it's, it's a lot about selfishness. It's a lot about what I want. See, if Joseph was a selfish person, he would have went ahead and, and, and took the bait. But guess what he would have did? It would have cost him. Joseph taking the bait and sleeping with Potiphar's wife would have cost not only him, but his whole uh, nation, a whole nation of people would have been swallowed up in a trick. And so we have to understand that God has caused us to be in certain places in certain positions, not just to save ourselves, but to save all of those are, that are around us and that connect with us. And so let's, let's, let's look at this again. Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in the entire household. And he says, he says, he himself has no more authority here than I have. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. But look, look, look at what he says after this because Joseph understood that doing right or wrong was bigger than just a decision and a situation that was going to happen between him and Potiphar's wife. He says, how can I do such a wicked thing as this? So he called the act that she wanted him to perform, he, she called it wicked. He says, how can I do such a wicked thing as this? It would be a great sin against who? Against God. So Joseph understood that Potiphar's wife was, was not the one that revealed a dream to him. Potiphar's wife didn't give him purpose. Okay? You have to understand that. The people around you that, 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 that try to influence you to make decisions, they are not God. And, and they, they can't help you they can't bless you. They can't keep you. <laughs> they cannot deliver you. You have to, the Bible says sometimes we have to swear to our own hurt and change not. 
See, we can't be influenced. That's why you have to have an intimate relationship with God. Because when God tells you something and he gives you a promise, you've got to be able to stand on it no matter what. No matter what people say, you got to keep your emotions out of it. You got to keep circumstances out of it. You got to be honest with yourself. You got to be honest uh, with God and have to understand that it's not the person that you need to please, but it's God. Because God is the one who gives you the commands and he's the one uh, who has his anointed on your favor on your life in the first place. He said, how can I do such a wicked thing as this? It would be a great sin against God. He understood it would be sinning against God. But the Bible says, says, but she kept on with her suggestion day after day. Don't you understand that the enemy won't leave you alone just because you said no? So guess what you got to be able to do? We have to be, as children of the living God, we must be able to stay focused and we must be able to stay attentive and alert. We have to say no to the enemy every day of our life. No, you don't get up and pray and, and say, I got it, I got it. The Lord going to fix my day because I just prayed to him. You better be able to say no during the day. You're going to have to be able to, I got the victory today. So a lot of times we tend, it's, it, is a, it is a tendency it is our tendency that when we have victories that we let our guards down. We start to say, well, you know, God, <laughs> me and God tight, he got this, so, you know, it, 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 it's all good. And that's what the enemy is waiting for. Even, you remember when Jesus, uh, when, when he, he fasted 40 days, and, and, and then the, he was tempted by the devil and so on and so forth, and then the Bible says, you know, after, after the last one that he left him for a season, he left him for a little while. The enemy, and it's evident in the Bible that he did come back. Okay, he came back. And so the enemy will leave you alone. While he's not bothering you, that's the time to praise God. That's the time to get your mind uh, renewed and transformed. That's the time, see, when you don't have all this pressure coming against you, that's the time to word up. That's the time to gird up the lawns of your mind. That's the time to put on the full armor when the enemy uh, has left you alone for a season because you got to understand he's coming back. And so when he come back, you'll be ready for him. You'll be strong. In these times when we're, when, when we, we're isolated and we can't go like we normally uh, would go, this is the time to word up. This is the time to be strengthened. This is the time, see, we're not all over the place and doing so many different things and real busy. So this is the time for you to have less noise in your life so that you can hear from God. So that God can download some stuff. God right now, for those who are in tune with him, he's downloading some important stuff from heaven in our spirit, man, in these times. And I hate to say it, but some, uh, some of God's people, some of the kingdom folk going to still miss it. They're going to miss it. While, while you have people uh, worrying and in fear and doing all kind of stuff, you have the people of God who he, has, he is downloading treasures and blessings and dreams and purposes and plans. He's downloading revelations and illuminations to the, to the family and the people of God. And right now we're in a situation where we can rejoice because we're still, we're quiet, we're not moving around that much. And, and you can just meditate and let God just, just bless you with his word and keep you. And so... We, we have to understand that the enemy, he never gives up. But, they, but, but Joseph said, you know, he, he, she, the, the Bible says, but she kept on with her suggestions day after day. And I want to reiterate that as children of the living God, we've got to stay focused. We've got to stay attentive, stay alert. See, the enemy shouldn't be able to pick us off from long distance all the time, every day. We should be able to see the enemy afar off. God will show him to us. God will reveal him to us. But we've got to pay attention. We've got to be alert. We've got to be attentive. The Bible says in verse 11, it says, Then one day as he was in the house going about his work, taking care of his own business as normal, as it happened, no one else was around at the time. Check this out. Look at this situation. Nobody in the house but... Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Now, I want to take you to a scripture, a passage of scripture, 2 Chronicles verse 16, chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. This is the Living Bible. 
Because you got to understand that it doesn't matter what's going on on the earth or in a location. You and that person or just you by yourself, you're never alone. Never alone. Because the Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord search back and forth across the whole earth. So that means God sees everything. So you can't hide. God was looking at the situation with Potiphar wife and, and Joseph. And he was checking Joseph out. And I know he had confidence in Joseph. He's like, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. The Bible says, for the Lord, for the eyes of the Lord search back and forth across the whole earth, looking for people whose hearts are perfect toward him. So he sees what's going on. He sees the trick, but he's also looking for individuals who are going to stand up and still do right in the midst of. And so, and so this scripture goes on to say, looking for people whose hearts are perfect toward him so that he can show his great power in helping them. Look at it. So God is looking for somebody that he can depend on that will take a stand. Then the Bible says in verse 12, says, she came and grabbed him by the sleeves, demanded, sleep with me. He tore himself away, but as, his did, as he did, his jacket slipped off and she was left holding it as he fled from the house. So Joseph had an intuition. If I can't do right and stay here, then I've got to run. But she held on to his coat. She, she wanted to build some false evidence against him later on. Paul tells Timothy, and this is for young people and middle age and elite and everybody. Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Here again, this is a living Bible. This is what Paul tells Timothy. Because Timothy is a young minister, and uh, there's a lot of things that he, he hadn't experienced yet. Paul says, run from anything that gives you the evil thoughts that young men often have. Run from anything that gives you the evil thought. In other words, you've got to run from any situation that's going to cause you to stumble, that's going to cause you to fall. You've got to run from any situation that's going to put you in a bind. You've got to run from any situation that can go south. In a, but, but see, you're not going to be able to run if you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit. You're not going to be able to run if you're a selfish person. You're not going to be able to run if you're thinking about, you know, now and not tomorrow. You're not going to be able to run if you're, if you're tied into your emotions. Because, you know, you know, the saying is the grass look greener on the other side of the fence. And when you jump the fence, you find out that all that was just fake grass. It, it wasn't real at all. And not only that, you can't even get back. The fence all of a sudden has, has grown higher and it's got barbed wire on it. So you can't get, you are stuck. And so we have to understand we, we, we must uh, realize that Paul is telling Timothy, you got to run from anything that gives you the evil thought that, that young men often have. Because young men, there's a lot of things they don't know, a lot of things they haven't experienced, and they are trapped. Read Proverbs. I think it's in verse, I think it's in chapter 3 or 4. But if you, I think if you, just, I don't, I'm, I don't remember exactly, but over in Proverbs, it talks about how the young man uh, needs to make sure that he uh, didn't, don't get trapped by the harlot, the prostitute that, that walks around at night trying to trap him in and take her to his house because all she's trying to do is destroy him, trying to destroy his life. Paul says, stay close to anything that makes you want to do right. So he says, run from anything that gives you the evil thought, but stay close to anything that makes you want to do right. And that's why you have to have good godly people around you you have to be in good uh, company you have to be in in a good location okay you have to watch your friends you have to watch your family you have to watch your co-workers and you have to watch your enemies now I know you thought only some people only per people you had to watch was your enemies no baby you got to watch everybody because if the enemy can't get you through your frenemies and through, and through the demons and devils, he'll try to come through your friends. He'll try to come through your relatives. He'll try to come through people in your house. He'll use whoever he can use 
at the time. So we've got to be able to run. See, look, notice Joseph didn't say, I'm going to fall down on my knees and pray. No, brother, no, it ain't time to pray. It's time to get. It's time to go. Okay, it's time to run. Flee. You, the Bible says flee useful lust that wars against the flesh. You can't play with this body. You can't play with your emotions. You can't play uh, uh, with, your, with your feelings. And, 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 and so he says, have faith and love and enjoy the companionship of those who love the Lord and have pure hearts. Okay? Verse 13. When she saw that she had his jacket and then he fled, she began screaming. And when the other men around the place came running to see what had happened, she was crying hysterically. Oh, she putting on the front. Oh, she just going on. Said, my husband had to bring in this Hebrew slave to insult us. She sobbed. He tried to rape me. But when I screamed, he ran and forgot to take his jacket. Look at this. And then the Bible says she kept the jacket. And when her husband came home that night, she told him not the truth, but told him her story. The Bible says she told him her story. Here she go again. That Hebrew slave you've had around here tried to rape me. And I was only saved by my screams. He fled, leaving his jacket behind. Well, when her husband heard his wife's story, he was furious. And guess what he did? He asked Joseph, is my wife telling the truth? The Bible says in verse 20, he threw Joseph into prison when the, where the king's prisoners were kept in chains. But I want to submit this to you and leave this with you. Isaiah 54, 17. The Bible says, and this is the amplified version. It says, but no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Got to know that. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And it says, in every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall show to be in the wrong. In other words, when people lie on you, you can live down a lie. And God's going to prove to everybody that they, what they said about you and against you was not true. The Bible goes on to say, says, this peace, righteousness, security triumph, triumph over opposition. So you don't have to worry about, you don't have to worry about the weapon that comes against you. You don't have to buy, worry, worry about the lie that is told, people talking about you, because the tongue is, 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 is something else. You have to understand that the peace and righteousness and serenity triumph over opposition. When you're in this situation, God gives you peace. Your peace increases when folks lie on you. Your righteousness increases when, when, when folks lie on you. You're secure in Christ Jesus when people lie on you. Okay? This is triumph over opposition. It's the heritage of the service of the Lord. In other words, God has already built into a plan. We have already received. An, inher an, an heritage from the Lord that when people come against us and stuff come against us and the weapon comes against us notice it says no weapon that is formed it will form but it won't prosper so don't get caught up in the form make sure you understand that you don't have to do anything but rest in the Lord make sure you understand that you have peace make sure you understand that you don't allow the enemy to cause you to be unrighteous but you have righteousness you still practice righteousness Righteousness. And then the Bible says, those in whom the idea servant of the Lord is reproduced. God, uh, God has already allowed us to receive all of this in the midst of trouble. And when stuff come against us, and then the Spirit of God, the Lord himself, the servant of the Lord, the Spirit of God on the inside of us is going to come through and still prevail see when we win over the weapon that's formed it's not us winning it's the Christ on the inside of us that's, that, that wins it's Jesus this is the righteousness or the vindication which they obtained from me this is that which I imparted to them as their justification says the Lord okay are we just about out of time Okay. So over at the Amplified verse 21, the Lord was with Joseph 
and he showed him mercy and love and kindness. So we're going to talk about that next Wednesday. Uh, next Wednesday evening, we're going to talk about how God still, in the midst of all that Joseph went through, he still gave him favor and increased him. I want you to stand fast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor will never be in vain. God bless you for listening. God keep